Let me show you how to navigate the spectrum of human emotions to enhance and uplift your relationships to both yourself and other people. To be even more precise, let's start exploring how emotional literacy and developing our emotional literacy can give us a greater degree of clarity, serenity, and acceptance when it comes to interfacing with the messy and multi-sided parts inside of ourselves and every single person that we encounter. Because this is the core idea which I find most fascinating when it comes to any theory of consciousness. Today we're looking at this theory, we're looking at the levels of consciousness by David Hawkins, which, of course, is today's inner work essential. It's actually transcending the levels of consciousness, which is one of David Hawkins' I think best books, actually. I've only read two, but I'm going to wager it's one of his best books, because although Power vs. Force was his breakout book where it came to charting the maps of consciousness and indicating the differences based on emotion, this is one of those practical on those manuals. But I don't want to go too close to the book in this episode of Inner Work Essentials, because it's a little bit too new agey for my liking. It's a little bit too vibrational a little bit too frequency-based, a little bit too wrapped in the language of New Age religious discourse, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but I think it's problematic when it comes to applying theories of consciousness, theories of emotionality, in an everyday, pragmatic sense, which helps us to heal the trauma of the past and develop ourselves incrementally as rational-minded creatures who can also go beyond that rationality without skipping too many steps. You see, it's very tempting when you read a book like Transcending the Levels of Consciousness to want to skip to one of these higher stages just because you've read 20 pages on a certain emotional series of sensations. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the screen right now. So this, for all intents and purposes, is the full spectrum of human emotions. David Hawkins would argue that, based on his approach, which takes a calibrated level of consciousness using some various spiritual um, information-finding tactics, that this is how we move up towards the ladder of enlightenment. Well, we get close to the ladder of enlightenment, and then we actually ascend that ladder of enlightenment. And it's a very spiritual book. It's a very spiritual concept, because the scale runs from 20 to a thousand, and of course we're human beings who want to look towards the top that we could possibly get to, and we see ideas like love, wisdom, and enlightenment as the most appealing, and honestly quite alluring places to get to. I think it's worth you exploring these ideas in your own time. I think it's worth reading this book, and going into those spiritual practices. But, for the sake of this video, I want to focus on how emotions in the everyday sense can be used to gain that entry point into wider theories of consciousness like spiral dynamics, integral theory, any kind of psychological developmental theory um, from antiquity or from more esoteric studies such as chakra systems, metaphysical systems, eastern, western, take your pick. Emotions are the key to our perceptual understanding of the world. But more importantly, and based on my personal curiosity, when it comes to parts work, when it comes to interfacing with maybe an inner child, with maybe the masculine or feminine archetypes, or interfacing with various versions of ourselves that conflict in oppositional dialectic tension and cause so much you know, mundane world suffering, the real unlock, the real cerebral shift that can be gained from looking at emotions is firstly to understand those emotions, right? I'll show you the table again. You can see clear emotions like shame, apathy, anger, moving all the way up towards neutrality and so on. And it would be a very straightforward, very, I'd say, almost insulting video if I were to go buy the book and tell you what each emotion meant. But you're a grown adult. You know what emotions are, right? You have a wide variety of sensory experiences. So what's the point of this video? Well, what I was going to say there is that understanding emotional complexity within ourselves at a theoretical level, and having an understanding of our emotionality where we see a rough baseline of, I suppose, gravitational pull. It's very difficult to avoid New Age language. 
but if we roughly see ourselves as calibrating in David Hawkins' language around level, I don't know, 200, neutrality, I think it's courage actually, courage level 200, that's way too simplistic. It's way too simplistic because we're complex creatures and we travel that whole spectrum of emotionality in a given day sometimes. Someone can have an enlightenment peak 10 seconds in their morning meditation practice and then be shame-based at the grocery store because someone looked at them a certain way. They can go upwards and downwards, side by side, and be lost in those spirals of emotion if they don't have at least some kind of conceptual understanding of what the hierarchy might look like and an acceptance of the mixed nature of their emotions throughout their entire lifetime. But let's make it even more complex, hopefully not too complex. When it comes to parts work, when it comes to trauma healing and trauma release by looking at a past pattern as signified by a certain metaphor or a certain symbolic um, idol or entity, such as an inner child, age 5, age 10, age 15, or a certain archetype such as a king, a warrior, a magician, a queen, a princess, a saboteur. They all have emotions too. And they don't just have one emotion. The warrior isn't just fueled by anger and destruction, but also valor and integrity. At least if he's a, a developed warrior. The princess, the princess isn't just beauty and adoration and maybe some of the more superficial ideas around vapidity or waiting to be rescued. She can also be an incredibly powerful and enlightened figure in some ways. You see what I'm saying, right? When it comes to understanding the levels of consciousness, you need to go beyond a certain theory, a certain structure of how we're going to hierarchically rank emotions, which I think, to the best of my understanding, is basically towards death or towards optimal life. States like shame are far more death-like than states of enlightenment, which are far more lifelike. It's very common sense. It's almost increasingly dualistic the more that you wrap it down and sink it down. It's good versus evil, right? And we don't want to label emotions good emotions and bad emotions, but most people would be pressed to try and <laughs> say that shame is a good emotion when they experience it. You can have healthy shame, and healthy shame stops us committing crimes or doing things which would hurt other people. But generally, it's a bad emotion. So what am I trying to get to in this video? With a wider understanding of emotions as a concept, with emotions as a felt reality, and emotions not only as a, a structuring force within our own psyche, but a structuring force within the different compartments of our psyche, the different parts of us that live throughout time and live in our imaginal states and live even in different parts of our body. If you want to look back onto previous episodes in this series where we do somatic parts work, that's all emotional to a significant degree. So if we want to get to that understanding stage, when it comes to the healing path, it's understanding and then acceptance and then the path towards wholeness. We need to expand our mental horizons to know that every single part has a full emotional spectrum within them and each part can be matured through a variety of practices, through a variety of releases, through a variety of conceptual understandings to then generally shift us towards a higher point as a baseline. We can move from anger towards love. In very pragmatic terms, we will still experience all of it. We'll still, <laughs> we'll still spend a lot of time in the shame state when it comes to going to a certain part. But a rising tide raises all ships, if you follow what I'm saying. If you want more specific examples, feel free to leave a comment below this video. Feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. I respond to everything. Although I'm making videos right now as kind of one of my main focuses, client work and one-to-one -one conversations is where I really live for. Because that's where you get to see where all these big theories of emotionality and consciousness and structured states and human evolution through time can actually be worked through. So this again is just an introduction to the work of David Hawkins and his map of consciousness, which I highly recommend you read for yourself, because it's a perfect primer for more complex and intellectually challenging 
theories, I suppose, like spiral dynamics or integral theory, and eventually the metaphysical theories that require a lot more faith and a lot more academic understanding. Start with emotions. Start with that everyday sensation. Because the everyday, everyday sensation will give you a hint towards where the next sensation might be, or the next level on the ladder. And if anything, I think the most common sense way of getting mentally healthy is to try and spend as much time in those higher states as possible. It might seem like uh, a dismissal of the lower states, but who realistically wants to spend time in shame, despair, and anger? Our lives are far too short on this earth to spend time locked in those heavy sensations. First we understand them, then we accept them, then we move to a different level to realize how that is not only alive within us across a variety of ways, but also alive within other people in a variety of different ways. And then parts work becomes so much more engaging. So that's why, again, I've started on this video, because the next few episodes in this series are going to be all about parts work. We're going to loop back around to shadow work in the very next episode, which you're going to see on the screen in just a moment, because those lower states tend to be the shadow states that we tend to address first um, when it comes to the healing journey, but also those higher states which form the golden shadow. So if you want to apply the theory of emotionality, if you want to take that spectrum of consciousness from something which is just cerebral into something which is actual, it's time to turn to parts work and realize how the parts that we have inside of us have their own emotional histories, their own emotional cartographies, and we can work with them to have healthier and more fulfilling lives. I'll see you over there.